don't go cheap now. I, I know some guys are like, well, I can't afford the best of the best. I'm like, well, it's an investment. This is Wedding DJ School. I'm Josh Mitchell, your guide to the business of a wedding DJ. We're talking with leaders in the wedding entertainment industry. You're going to learn their backstories, how they got started, and where they are today. Today, we're back with Brian Harris from Brian Harris Entertainment. This is part two of our conversation. Last episode, we talked about the value of learning, going to conferences and getting the appropriate training you need in order to deliver world-class service. We also talked about communication, following up with clients, seeking after them to make sure that you're prepared for the gig. You don't just wanna hope that things go well, you need to have a plan. We talked about having a clean, neat, good-looking setup because it communicates that you care. Clean communicates that you care. We're picking up today's conversation talking about equipment. Brian has some great advice, especially if you're just starting off. You may have thought about going cheap just to get started, but here's what Brian would have to say about that. Don't go cheap now. I I know some guys are like, well, I can't afford the best of the best. I'm like, well, it's an investment. It's an investment in your business and it's an investment for for your clients. Don't go out and buy the cheapest wireless microphone because it's going to give you grief and you're going to be kicking yourself for not spending an extra two or 300 or whatever it takes to get that better quality microphone. Uh, it really does make a difference. Um, it's like you either spend more now or you spend more later when you're having to upgrade your equipment uh, or and or replace the, the cheap crap that you bought. Um, so don't go cheap. Um, you don't have to get the top of the top of the top of the line, but get something that um, is is worthy of of representing you and, and your clients. You know, you don't want you don't want you don't want uh, issues in, in the middle of of the ceremony or the, the reception. You know, you you'll be you will be saying to yourself, "Oh my God, I should not have bought this. I knew I should have spent an extra two hundred bucks." <laughs> Yeah, and I I think sometimes people don't realize that when you're at the gig and you're using that expensive thing that that you know is going to deliver in the moment, you are also marketing yourself for your next 5 gigs. You're also marketing, you know, that reputation that you have. So you might look at it as, "Oh, well, this is a really expensive uh microphone." But on the other hand, you're also representing your company. You re- you're representing that wedding, and if you do a great job for that one that's coming up that's right around the corner, people are then going to talk about, "Wow, that was awesome. I could hear everyone. The mic didn't cut out. Um, they will be talking about it if the mic cuts out. They will be talking about it if uh, if something goes wrong. So think about that. Like in terms of a lot of people, when they think marketing, they think about websites and advertising. It's also how good your equipment works and how reliable it is because that is how people are going to spread the word about you. And you want that reputation of uh, no distractions, being able to create that seamless experience. People, people have seen more bad. People have had more bad experiences seen more bad DJs with bad equipment and uh, then they have good. So when they, when they go to a wedding or any event where everything is crystal clear, everything is, it, there's no static, there's no whatever. It, they're like, wow, this is, I'm really enjoying myself. I, I can hear everything. I can hear all the toasts. I hear everything that he's saying. I don't feel like it's muffled or like there's a wet blanket over top of the speaker. It's just, this is great. And Hey, uh, I'm proposing to my my girlfriend next week, and guess what? I'm going to remember this guy, you know, and I'm going to hire him for my wedding uh, when we get married. Yeah, and people remember that kind of thing for years. I mean, even if they're not getting engaged a couple months later, I've had people that have reached out and said, hey, you DJed so-and-so's wedding four years ago, and I knew then I wanted to hire you. So that marketing, you, you have to be in it for the long haul. All right, I have two questions as we wrap up here, and then uh, and then we'll, we'll carry on. So, um my, my, I'll, I'll ask them both, and then that way uh, we can uh, we can go from there. So, what's one problem that you still deal with today, even after all these years of DJing? <laughs> one thing that still comes up, and then the last question is going to be: What's a goal that you're working toward right now? Something that you're thinking about as you continue to grow and continue to evolve in your own practice. So, let's start with one problem today that you still deal with, something that doesn't go away that you have to continue dealing with as a DJ. Yeah, uh, I would say the that would be. Um, Getting a client in front of me before talking about price. Um, without sounding like I'm tooting my horn here, my prices are are higher than average in my area. Um, I would consider my my style and my approach to my business a little bit more of a boutique. Um, 
but for all the right reasons. You know, if, if a bride just wants a DJ to play music, I'm probably not the guy for her. But if she's looking for something that's unique and different, I'm the guy. Um, and I need to be able to, I need to be able to share that with her and, um, uh, convey the value of what I'm going to bring to her wedding. Um, because until she meets with me, until she knows that this information, she doesn't know what she doesn't know. She thinks she's just hiring music. And, um, once I can open her mind to all of the unique things that we can do from, uh, a really fun, unique grand entrance to the love story to, you know, different ways to get the guests involved. Um, and not only that, but just to show them my professionalism, to show them that, look, I've got a game plan here. We will create a timeline together. I've got an online planning portal for you to, to use, to, to plan with me. Um, it's not just going to be like, Hey, sign on the, on the dotted line and I'll see you at your wedding. There's, there's a lot of, uh, homework, fun homework, uh, so to speak, uh, to prepare for your, your wedding day. So, um, a lot of brides just want, they want to know a price, you know, they're even asking for a price before they even find out if I'm even available. <laughs> and, uh, that can be frustrating, but I understand they don't know what else to ask. Um, uh, we're just, we're kind of trained as humans to whether, no matter what, whether we're buying an item or, or a, a service is to the first question is, Hey, how much does this cost? And there's so much involved in what I do. Um, that I, if I just spit out a number, it's, it's not going to tell them anything. It's not fair to them. It's not fair to me. Um, because they're going to be like, what, that much for, for a DJ for music? No, it's more than that. Um, so yeah, that, that would be my, my one thing that, that I still struggle with. Um, um, and, and with the, the younger ages now, the, the, the millennial and Gen Z age groups, they, they want to know an answer now. They, and, and I get it. I get it. Um, but I still want to be able to, to get them in front of me to talk about what I can do for their wedding because man, they, they could be the perfect couple and I could be the perfect DJ for them. And we don't get to work together because I wasn't able to do that. And it's a shame, you know? Sure. Do you have any suggestions or, or, uh, these days, is there something that you've found that works well to try to get that initial point of contact before you reveal the, uh, the, the investment? I hate to say it, but I, I just won't give my price out if they're not willing to meet with me. Um, if, if they're, if they're not willing to take some time to, to learn about what, what we can do. Um, and I let them know there's no obligation. I'm not going to, I'm not going to use car salesmen them, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to make them feel pressured. Um, but if they're not willing to take the time to, to meet with me, um, to learn more about, about their wedding, what, what we can do for it, um, you know, for the biggest day of their life, you know, when they've got this much overhead of, of a budget, um, if they're not willing to take the time, then, then I don't think they're the right client for me. So, um, I don't really, I don't worry about the ones that aren't willing to, to meet with me. Most of the time they're, they're willing to meet, meet with me, believe it or not. Um, but there's still the ones that are like, well, you know, we don't want to waste your time. Um, you know, if you're not within our budget, you know, we, uh, we don't want to waste your time or our time. And so. And I think this is huge for beginners to realize, even if you're starting to realize your value, um, not every client is your client and not every person is meant to work with you. And I remember, um, when I, you know, first started realizing my value, I felt this, you know, twinge of anxiety thinking, wow, there's all these weddings happening this weekend and I'm not DJing them. And, and you've got to realize though, that, uh, not every client out there is your client. You're not meant uh, to be the DJ for every single one of these weddings. And they just, you know, uh, they, they just might, might not be the right one for you and that's okay. And getting a process in place. So what I think we can even learn from what you just said right there is you've got to have a process. You've got to even know when, when from the moment that they reach out to you in, in terms of asking if you're available or what the price is, you already have to have a pre-decided response of how you're going to, uh, you know, ex uh, <laughs> now I can't talk. Um, how you're gonna make? How you're gonna broker that that communication? And if you're just guessing and you're you're doing it each um, interaction just off the hip and and hoping that it works out, as my friend likes to say, hope is not a strategy. 
you need to have a strategy. You need to decide what you're going to do. So I think that's that's really great wisdom um, that you're sharing with us that, that we can all learn from. Tell us what's a goal that you're working towards. What's something that you're kind of looking forward to, an area that, that you want to refine or, or just something that as you look out over the next six to, to 12 months or maybe even beyond that, what's something that you are trying to achieve in the future? Um, I've noticed here lately that uh, I've been mixing more. And when I say that, I mean more quick mix, quick mixes in and out. Um, you know, people's attention spans are tiny anymore. Um, but I, all, I always ask my couples, do you, do you prefer the whole song play? Do you prefer a quick mix or a little bit of both? Um, and I tell them that my approach is, uh, if it looks like everyone's bored out there, like they were dancing and all of a sudden they got their phones in their hands or taking selfies. They're not really dancing. They've lost interest in that song. So I, I let them know that I've been, I, I do uh, mix in and out more often now. So my goal um, is just to get better as, as a, as a beat mixer. Um, I've always beat mixed. I'm a drummer. So beat mixing uh, has come naturally to me, but I will say that I don't start using a DJ controller, believe it or not, until, uh, late 2016. Um, prior to that, I was just a laptop DJ. I'd have two laptops side by side and, um, one was my main, one was my backup and, uh, and one for queuing up songs to listen to, um, you know, if I wasn't familiar with the song, but, uh, once I got into, uh, using a controller, um, I realized how much easier it, was, it is to mix because people were like, well, how do you mix with just a laptop? Like, well, it can be done. I, I, I've got good rhythm as a drummer and just, it can be done. But now, now that I've been using a, a controller for almost three years, I see how much easier it is to, to cue songs and, and, and to create cue points within the song uh, loops and, and different things that I wasn't doing before. Um, and it's making it more fun for me. Really. It, it makes it more interesting um, you, you keep people's attention on the dance floor a lot more, uh, because they're not getting bored with a three and a half, four minute song, uh, by playing it all the way through. Um, that being said, if they're loving the song and I'm halfway through the song and they're still just dance floors on fire, I'm not going to kill that song just, just because, uh, I think I should, uh, go into the next song. I, I'm going to keep it going. So it's really all about keeping your eyes on, on the, uh, on the dance floor and reading the crowd and reading their kind of their temperature and, and how they're responding to the music, but also making it creative and being, and being, cre being creative with, with your mixes. Um, and with, with the DJ controller now for three years, it's been, it's been fun. So, uh, to summarize your question, my goal is just to get better, um, and get more creative and, and try and ch challenge myself with, with my mixes. What's your software and controller that you're using these days? I use uh, Virtual DJ and I use uh, Pioneer SX2. That's my exact setup. So it's uh, highly recommended. And um, yeah, if anybody's listening right now, you know, I, we've said this before. I, I think you even mentioned it earlier in, in today's uh, uh, conversation that, you know, the equipment isn't going to make you a great DJ. So, you know, just because you own a, uh, a Pioneer mixer or whatever, you know, you, you think is, uh, you know, going to make you a good DJ, um, it doesn't necessarily, it, that's not necessarily going to translate because what I love about your story is for years you had a successful business without a DJ controller. So that is a testament to say, hey, look, if you can't afford it, get out your laptop and do the hard work of figuring out how to get these songs to mix well together, and you can run a business on the laptop without having to make that big investment. So I just, I love that about your story because, you know, I look at, at your business, I look at how much uh, you've invested into yourself and how much education you've had, and you look back in 2016 is when you started using that controller, and um, it's a very nice controller. I highly recommend it, but it's not going to make you a great DJ. You have to have those things built in and that fire in the belly that you talked about. Wow. I love that. That's such a great, uh, I used to think that it was all for show, you know, cause I'm, I'm not a scratcher. Uh, you know, do I, would I like to learn someday? Yeah. I think what some of these guys do, like my buddy, Henry race, um, who's incredible and just blows me away every time I see him. He's so creative and he has so much fun with it. And I just love the guy and, and what he's been doing. Um, if you're not familiar with Henry Race, check him out. 
Um, I would love to be able to do that stuff. Um, I feel like I should be able to do it pretty easy because I'm a drummer, right? And, and I've got rhythm and I, I can, I can manipulate rhythms and, and, and things with my hands on the drum kit. But man, I've tried it and it is not, uh, as easy as some of these guys make it to uh, look. Um, uh, but that's because they've been spending hours upon hours in their, in their studio, just working their craft and it props to them, all those guys out there that, that are doing it. Um, but again, I've always thought that a DJ controller was, was for scratchers, was for show. Look at me, you know, and, um, it's not, um, it, it's cool. It's, it, it gives you that cool DJ, uh, uh, look, you know, st style. Um, but man, it, it does, it really does make, um, your job as a beat mixer, uh, much, much easier. Um, and like I said, the cue points and the loops and all that stuff that I use now that I, I never did before, um, has, has actually reduced the time of preparation, uh, for, for things like grand entrances where I used to, I would create my own, uh, MP3 of, of a, of a loop of, the instrumental to, to talk over as I'm introducing, uh, this person. And I would, and I would butt that up against, uh, the, uh, a copy of that same song with the, um, uh, with the vocal part of it in there and then jump to that. It, I can't, it's too, too complicated to, to go into right now, but, um, the DJ controller has made my life a lot easier to, to manipulate stuff like that. So, uh, now I'm kicking myself Anyways. in the butt for not for not getting it earlier. Same with virtual DJ. I started using virtual at the same time. Um, I, back in the day, I was a PC DJ Red user. Uh, shout out to all my users back then. I'm sure you're out there. <laughs> um, and and back when I was using that, guys that were using virtual were like, "Dude, you need to get virtual DJ. It's so much better." I'm like, it's it's just I'm, I'm comfortable with PC DJ. Why would I want to change? And ever since I started using PC DJ or using virtual DJ, I realized, oh my God, that's what they're talking about. This is so much better. Um, even just the software alone, forget the controller, but I have the controller in there and it's just the, it's the bee's knees. It really is. Yeah. And I, I mean, I've tried all of them and it, I mean, it's, you've got to figure out what works best for you. And when you feel like you, you're in that state of flow and when you're like, oh my gosh, this thing kind of becomes invisible and now I can get creative. That's when you know, you found the right application for you. It's going to be different for each person. And I think, you know, some people say about Serato, how I feel about virtual DJ and it's, you know, kind of to each their own. And I don't really judge or try to persuade anybody to go either way. Um, but you do have to try Try. You do have to go around and, and see, you know, taste a little bit from each camp. I think Virtual DJ is free without a controller, so you can at least just download it and, and test it out. But that was um, when I could start relying on my software, it was like, you know, complete game changer for me because I used to have this anxiety of, oh, what if my software quits? I was using all kinds of different weird apps and stuff that were not reliable. And, uh, you know, just trying to save a buck or trying to, you know, say, oh, well, this is what I've always used. But you really, it, it's important to try different things until you find what you really feel like works well for you. So I'm, I'm encouraged to hear that even uh, after being in the industry, you know, since 97 and in 2002 and 2004, really making your shift. I mean, you didn't start doing this a couple weeks ago. You've been in this for a while. You have some skin in the game. Um, but still, you're trying new things. And um, it's never too late. And, uh, you know the biggest regret that you might have is that you didn't start earlier. So I love that, you know, hearing that from you, it's just very encouraging. Um, any closing thoughts as, as we wrap up? If, if you're new to the, to the DJ world, um, get yourself in, in groups of, of, of people who's got the experience. Um, you're going to learn from them and guys like me and, and, um, and with the same amount of experience, we are, we are willing to share because, um, it's just going to make the industry that much better if we can encourage uh, new guys to take the right steps to get them uh, to where they want to be sooner than later. Um, you know, I, I kind of put myself in, 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 in circles with people that, that were doing better than me, um, but I wish I would have got there sooner. So if you're new, find, find someone who's got the experience, who's, who's doing it uh, as a career, and they, they will help you, um, and they will you know, 
put you in the right direction to to get you to skyrocket your business to where you would like it to be, I'm sure. I want to thank Brian Harris for joining us on Wedding DJ School. You can find out more about him at brianharrisentertainment.com. You can also check out the links in the description of this show for more information. We don't want you to forget about us. You can text Wedding DJ to 44222. And if you send us your email address, we will send you a comprehensive equipment checklist and all of the action guides for season one of the podcast. And there's a ton of great content there what to do with contracts, things to think about in terms of being an MC, and so much more, all for free. Just text Wedding DJ to 44222. We're going to continue talking with leaders in the wedding entertainment industry on the Wedding DJ School podcast. We will see you next week for a new episode.